have two dreams that I always wanted to. Only one of them came true. Unfortunately, I lost the young brother when I was young, and I went out across town to a cemetery on Saturday night and said a few prayers and prayed to God that I know I'll never get a chance to see my brother, but let my other dream come true was to lift the Lee McCarthy Cup. Rod Guiney with the sideline cut. Kieran Carey tried to get a stick to it. Gary Laffin has it. Skips away from Mark Foley. Under hits it. Larry Murphy got it. Oh. It's the net. Tom Dempsey. It's a to wear the purple and gold. And the purple and gold is my heart and my soul. Tom Dempsey, goal-scoring hero of the Guinness All-Ireland Final, singing to his teammates. And you know, in years to come, he'll be singing ballads about these men. One of the dozens to sign the purple and gold car, the manager of Wexford, the man who led them to the Lee McCarthy Cup, Liam Griffin. Quite a fuss being made of Martin's story, that's very understandable. He's back at his home club, Alert the Ballot. <laughs> Next stop on the tour from Alert to the Ballock, and we rode on the flat top with Martin's story and the Wexford team. Now he truly was at home, back in his own half of the parish. And there he and his men took time out to reflect upon the hurling year of 1996. Now starting out the championship of 1996, I don't suppose anyone gave you a chance, did they? Nobody gave us a chance, but I mean, the, the, the crowd of lads that were together, like the panel of us and, and Liam and, and James and Rory, I mean, we had decided last year that we were going to do something this year and really work hard and, and leave no sort of stone unturned in an effort to achieve something. In case people haven't ever heard you before, you don't normally speak like this in your Rod Stewart voice, but this is part of the baggage of the All-Ireland victory, isn't it? It is well, there's been a lot of it. There's been a lot of singing and dancing and shouting and roaring and talking and speeches and everything for the last four days. And I suffer with sort of a bad throat all the time, so if I use the voice too much, I, I get very hoarse. The men, they've gone it all on the road and all the time into it and got us all together. He told us if we stuck ahead and kept fighting and kept working, we would get our reward. And thank God he kept us going. That's Liam Griffin, our manager. How did you go about convincing them that you were the man? I'm talking about the players now. Well, for a start, I had hurled a lot myself. I mean, in my younger days, I gave up hurling very young, in fact. I gave up hurling at 21 years of age because I was in the hotel business. But I, I had a meeting with the players, really said, initially. And um, from my point of view, I put a strategy before them for what, which I felt would work. And I think that they viewed it with a kind of a certain amount of, my God, maybe, or whatever. But I mean, um, I think I was honest and consistent, and the fact that I was honest and consistent would have led to several bits of bits of problems. But consistency always leads to eventual some kind of a calmness, and I think eventually they accepted me because I was consistent and I was honest. Wexford's first opponents in 1996, their old rivals Kilkenny, and that always evokes memories of great games of the past. For instance, 1993, when Wexford felt that they truly had a chance to beat the Black and Amber. So how did Liam Griffin feel about beating them in 1996? We had had a very good run in the National League. We got right through to the National League semi-final. So we went in quite comfortable in the Kilkenny game. I actually banned the players from talking about 93 to the press because the press would automatically start off every question by saying, but what about the dreadful misses of 93? And of course, if you sit there at every interview before a big game and start talking about the negative sides of 93, you start to believe it. So we banned all that nonsense and said, no, you've got to think forward. Positive thinking was certainly paying off for Wexford in the first half. 
Here's Eamon Scallon, and that's touched over the post off the stick there of Michael Welsh. 23 minutes into the game, there was just two points between them. Then, Martin Storey, with one score already on the board, put on three more without reply. Martin Storey, getting a lot of possession from Philly Larkin, who have to be a great deal tighter, and this one sells between the posts. Martin Storey, again he has a shot at it, and again he puts it over the bar. But into Martin Storey, another chance for Martin, and another point. So at this stage, it's like a party piece. Give him the ball, he'll put it over. Sean Flab. Helping it out towards Larry O'Gorman. On towards George O'Connor. I'm sure he'd wish that the corner men would stay in a bit nearer towards the end line. That shot there from Rory McCarthy and it's struck over the bar. Great fetch there by Paul Codd. Philly Larkin here. More comfortable on this near side against Larry Murphy. Rod Guiney breaks it down. The game beginning to take off at last. Liam Cohen up towards Michael Phelan. Ryan calling for it, but Phelan goes for the score himself and he puts it over the bar. Kilkenny getting a point back, but Wexford still had five points to spare at halftime. Right at the start of the second half, Kilkenny began to take a hold on the game and they took four scores in a row. That's John Power, and he drops it in, and he drops it over the bar. Charlie Carter calling for it, it's Ryan who has it. Back out towards Canis Brennan. Going the long way towards the goal, but it all ends with a point by Canis Brennan. And Billy Byrne is on. Great old championship campaigner. I'm sure he's saying less of the old. Chase by Billy Byrne. Byrne powerless to stop him. Comes out to Liam Cohen on a mighty clearance by the left half back. That's a huge one way down there. Delaney in there around the house. Jer Kosh trying to stop him. This is PJ Delaney and that flashes out of the bar. And this is a glorious spell now for Kilkenny for a change team in the second half. Only one point between them, but that was to be the closest Kilkenny were to get. Wexford began to score again. Martin Storey added his fifth point of the game. And with 10 minutes left, super sub Billy Byrne had a goal. Dropping it in. Billy Byrne's in there. Byrne has scored! It's a goal for Wexford! The lead was now seven points. Kilkenny could only play catch up. They got it down all right to three points, but no better. Final score. 114 to no goals and 14 points and a win for Wexford. The Kilkenny victory was uh, an extremely good victory for us in that Kilkenny were short John Power and that Kilkenny felt that GJ wasn't up to form. I felt that we'd have beaten them anyway. But the fact was that that was good for us because it masked our victory as ah, ah but they're not that good. When I knew hey we're not too bad we're going to go okay. In the Leinster semi-final, Wexford played Dublin. Dublin with two former Kilkenny players in their side, James Brennan and the formidable Eamon Morrissey. Dublin was the one I worried about. I mean, when you were playing the Kilkennys and the Offalys and the Corks and the Limericks and the Galways, they were one of the top teams in the country. And you have something to aim at because they have they've had success. Like, whereas Dublin were like ourselves in the sense that they were struggling all the time. And it's very hard to rise. We found it harder to rise our game for Dublin. That was the one I really worried about. Knocked down by Eamon Scallon to Tom Dempsey in rushing. Gary Lappin for Wexford. Tight angle, but he's put it over the bar. That's confidence from Gary Lappin. Wexford started well, five points to one up, when Eamon Morrissey had a chance from the penalty for his first Dublin score. Morrissey doesn't lift it but he gets in a cut off the ground and it's gone into the net 
one point between them but Wexford pulled away again with two goals in a three minute spell Liam Dunn leads it to Martin Storey plays it down the line initially it was meant for uh, Tom Dempsey it comes here to uh, Gary Laffin another score chance on yes a goal a goal for Wexford by Gary Laffin Eamon Burke is facing his opposite number, Damien Fitzhenry. The goalkeeper who sometimes plays out the field has got the goal. It's sometimes a long, lonely run when they're missed, but when they're scored, you love every yard of it and you run, run and sprint much faster. Wexford led by nine points at half time, but Dublin responded. John Toomey was on song with his freeze, and then a James Brennan point narrowed the gap further. Ten minutes to go at Crook Park between Dublin and Wexford. Five points in it. Wexford's game has really fallen apart in the second half. You just wonder what would happen if Dublin could work a goal. Kevin Flynn had first run on that for Dublin. Fell eventually to uh, James Brennan, who goes for the point and gets it. That's a lovely score. Wexford did recover their poise and won the match by six points. But it was a far from convincing display. So definitely no complacency in their camp before the Leinster final. We were after being criticised so much after the Dublin match, like, and we knew ourselves we were trying to change our style and keep the ball moving fast the whole time and play low ball into the forwards and keep it spread out. And, and in the second half against Dublin, we just, I mean, our, our discipline wasn't there and, and it didn't work for us. And I mean, that was a disappointing aspect of that game, but it worked in our favour in the end, really. I think I'm right in saying you are not happy with your defeat of Dublin. No, I was very happy. In fact, this worked to our favour again. I think this was destiny at the end of the day. Uh, or else we'd gotten our side, which I think is the both the same thing, really. In the first half against Dublin, we played some wonderful hurling. Absolutely wonderful hurling. And, and, and I said to one of my selectors halfway through the game, we said, we're playing out of our skin. Now we played badly in the second half, and the papers gave us an absolutely rubbish review. And I was delighted with that, because the papers ignored the first half. Had the game been flipped over, they would have given us rave reviews. So we got away with a nice victory and we got away with it nice and quietly. So Wexford had booked their place in the Leinster final. The other Leinster semi-final was contested between reigning champions Offaly and Leash. A very convincing display by Offaly as they put four goals, 17 points past Leash, although their second goal was a gift from an unfortunate Leash defender. And this is a ball that Ricky Kessler will have to reach. He does very well and he loses out! Saved on the line, it's John O'Sullivan! How could you, John O'Sullivan? Heartbreaking moment for the county of Leash. John Troy had a great game, getting good points and outstanding goals. John Troy. Good effort, which goes straight over the bar. Great point by John Troy. Nice skill by Eriting, creating problems here, putting it across, well blocked down, chance here, blocked again, there's danger here, Ricky Cashin has to come out to scoop it in, and it's a goal, John Troy, the goal that Offaly sought. And Rigney didn't connect, Declan Pilkington does, there's a goal here, John Troy, take it out, thank you very much. John Troy. So it was to be a Wexford Offaly final. And nobody was really giving Wexford too much of a chance. Even their own supporters were only slightly optimistic. On Wexford's home go. training Let pitch, however, Let manager Let Liam go. Griffin had go. put his players through 150 on, sessions go. of tough, tough training. Come on, go, go. The Wexford players' minds were set and the disappointments of other years had to be forgotten. I mean, the Offaly game was a major for us. I mean, this was the big psychological quantum leap. But don't forget, we'd worked on our small victories. We'd beaten Offaly in Burr in the Welsh Cup in February. We'd beat them in the National League quarter final in uh, in uh, in Turles in, in March or whatever, April. So, like, our lads, while they were worrying, they still felt quite confident. And we put together a splendid performance and beat them.
We were going up to the Leinster final and we were all on the bus like and we were having the usual sort of bit of a banter and a laugh and a crack and all and we, the bus stopped. So Liam got us all off the bus and, and he says, now lads, he says, we, we, he, he, like Liam is a great man to motivate you and build you up and get your mind working. Like, so this was part of his plan for the Leinster final. He says, now lads, he says, we're going to walk out of Wexford into Wicklow and the next time we come back in, we're going to be Leinster champions. And he says, we'll come back in as heroes and I mean, we did. So you walked across the bridge? We walked out across and we just said we'd give each other a promise going out that we would come back in as Leinster champions. And we did. John Troy. Sending it in, a dangerous ball, Damien Fitzhenry! Oh, oh. is telling the umpire the green flag has been raised and Billy Dooley gets credit for the goal some holding there by Offaly Martin Hanami gets it out of small bits by Swivel Rigney and Brian Wheelahan that's a good ball Jerk Cush comes forward Knocks it away, only for Joe Dooley to get there first. Beside him, Liam Dunn. Difficult angle for Joe. No, not difficult for Joe. Excellent Joe Dooley point. He's really having, he's on his game here today, but Wexford will have to be far tighter in the half-back line. They're letting the, the, the half-forward line far too much space and latitude around the field. A very fine point by Joe Dooley. Well gathered by Larry O'Gorman. And that is sailing straight over the bar. Larry O'Gorman has discarded the helmets. He now can see clearly, and definitely the goalposts are within his sights. Tony Pilkington. It's a good line cut. Well gathered by Rob Guiney, must be said. And a good clearance. Not very far. Michael Dignan is there. Cuts away from Larry O'Gorman, hooked by Larry O'Gorman, left behind and cleared almost, well blocked. And it's Offaly, Billy Dooley, giving it to Tecton Pilkenden, and that's a point. Well gathered by Larry Murphy, giving Brian Wheelham plenty to think about. Good run by Murphy. And the finish again. But this time the referee has given a semi penalty for a frontal charge. Damien Fitzhenry. He did it in the semi final against Dublin. But this is the real test. Fitzhenry. Hits it. Foul for the country of Wexford. David Fitzgerald did it in the Munster final of 95. Damien Fitzhenry. Does it in the Leinster final of 96. We've got a whopping good final. Ball knocked down towards Roy McCarthy. Oh, that's a real tester. It's dropping and dropping. Tom Dempsey, is there a Wexler man there? There isn't. There is now. Martin Story. Outside him is Larry Murphy. Story sees what he wants to do and he puts it away. The captain from all at the bottom gets his first point in the Leinster final. And look at these Wexford people, and there's only, what, 21 minutes gone in the first half. The sides level in Croke Park. Martin Storey, who gets a knock on the head from Hubert Rigney, falls nicely for Larry O'Gorman to Tom Dempsey. A shot which goes over the wall. Tom Dempsey's first point in the Leinster final. Made and created by Larry O'Gorman. Wexford 1-9, Offaly 1-8. Another great puck out by Liam Coxon. Liam Dunn getting a hurley to it. 
Eamon Scallon. Oh, well hooked by Johnny Pilkington, comes to Adrian Finlan. Sends it up again towards Gary Laffin. Runs on. Here's a chance. Wexford's Rory McCarthy. Here's Tom Dempsey to his left. Rory! And he puts it over the bar. But it should have been a goal. And he should have passed it to Tom Dempsey. Oh, I think an excellent chance of a goal there. Tom Dempsey was crying for that ball. Great atmosphere in Croke Park. Picked up by Declan Pilkington. Sean Flood chasing, harassing, hooking. Over towards Joe Dooley. Pulled on. Oh, superb by Johnny Pilkington. The second of the afternoon. Wexford lead by just one point. Shane McGuckian giving a loose ball to Martin Stoney. He salutes the Wexford crowd with a clenched fist. He does it again for the camera and Wexford starts the way they finished. Two points between the teams. Liam Dunn. Good centre-back play. Knocked down for Rory McCarthy. Knocked away by Kevin Martin. Loose ball comes to Adrian Fenlon. And Fenlon is scooping it sufficiently enough, not quite. Liam Cotter. Not a good clearance. Comes to Larry Murphy, who finishes the job second time round. Larry Murphy gets his first point of the Leinster final. And Wexford are certainly intent on meaning business. The atmosphere around Croke Park on all approach roads was unquestionably Wexford, Wexford, Wexford. And you get the feeling that it's not going to be the team's fault this time if they fail. Determination etched on Larry Murphy's face. Etched on some wonderful point taking by Larry Murphy from Club On. Tears in the eyes of a Wexford man already. I warn you, Wexford, it's a long, long way to go. Well pulled on. Liam Dunn going back to gather it. He gets there ahead of Billy Dooley. Charkush. Spot of bother here. Liam Dunn comes in to help him once more. Up towards Tom Dempsey and Shane McGuckian. Scooping it up. Almost shovel-like is Larry Murphy, who sends a ball straight over the crossbar. What a score! What a point! What a man! Larry Murphy. By God, they mean business in Crow Park, these Wexford lads. Adrian Fenner. Hitting that sideline cut brilliantly. Dropping it right in. Gary Laffin off the post. There's a scramble. Looks there. Wexford have found the glory days. Gary Laffin got the touch. And all of Pro Park has come alive. Look at this, Wexford people. Look at this. The big man from Glen Barntown. No wonder you take off your hat, sir. Today could be your day. We continue on down at the other end. Joe Errity giving it to Michael Dyke. And oh, yes! Great goal! And hopefully now are the people jumping for joy. From one end we have a goal, to the other end we have a goal. And Michael Dyke is the man who brings Offaly back into the match. This is the first goal as that ball came in. There was a bit of a scramble. Gary Laffin first hit the ball off the crossbar and then it was scrambled through. In fact, it was Tom Dick Dempsey. It was Tom Dempsey, actually. It was Tom Dempsey, actually, that scrambled it in. At the other end, Offaly came forward and responded like champions. What a Joe response. Ergy to Michael Dignan. And Michael Dignan rattled it into the net. Into the middle. Oh, what wonderful fielding. Larry O'Gorman. Hubert Brigney. Stopped by Rory McCarthy. Back to Kevin Martin. Larry Murphy putting his head where nobody would be brave enough to do. Down to Tom Dempsey. 
sending it goal bound. Oh, what a magnificent punt! Tom Dempsey! Wexford are on the verge of history. Can they hold on? Can the fateful county, the great county of Albany, respond? Blocked by Larry Murphy. The Wexford players are playing inspirational stuff. Martin Story looking for the goalpost and finding the goalpost. Answer that awfully if you can. Club Park belongs to Wexford perhaps. Three minutes left. Rod Guiney. Tom Dempsey, difficult angle, but not to Tom Dempsey. One goal and four points for Tom. The 19-year wait is over. They're rejoicing on the banks of Slaney. They're rejoicing in Croke Park. Henry, Martin Story, and another card for Wexford. There's no going home tonight from Crow Park. They have suffered long and far. They've suffered for years down on Wexford at the hands of the people from Kilkenny and Offaly. But now, unquestionably, it has to be Wexford. Johnny Perkinton trying for a last minute chance and a last minute point four points for Johnny but it's not enough for Offaly surely the referee will, won't allow too much for injury time there's 36 minutes played Larry Murphy Trying to get it inside to Eamon Scallon, to Martin Storey, looking at the posts, and it's so easy now. There'll be bonfires in Wexford tonight. A most unusual scene here for a Leinster final. Crowd control is gone. Is there a last minute flurry in Wexford to finish it off? Tom Dempsey taking his points. One goal and five points for Tom. What wonderful scenes in Crow Park. The whole scenario is a sea of purple and yellow. Look at this in Crow Park. The whole sideline, it's all over, surely. Wexford are next to champions. Such joy, such emotion. Wonderful, wonderful emotion. Overjoyed Wexford people. This is their day. It's taken a long, long time, and Liam Griffin has done a wonderful job with his county. That's Martin Story. The captain of Oxford makes Slims the trophy for the first time since 1977. Well done, Slaney Siders. That was the moment for me of the whole year. I mean, people would say the All-Ireland and the homecoming and everything else, but... It was been, uh, what was it, oh, 70, many years? 77 was the last year. 77 was the last year, like, and to stand there, to walk up the steps and see Wexford people standing on Crow Park, looking up towards the hall and stand for a presentation to a Wexford person, it was an unbelievable moment for me. I mean, that was the, the moment that I realised that, God, this is brilliant, we have won something. So, Wexford through to the All-Ireland semi-final after beating... Kilkenny, Dublin and Offaly. Meanwhile, Dunn and Munster, Limerick were conquering the big three there. There was optimism in Cork about the prospects of the hurling the team under the so-called Dream Team management trio of Jimmy Barry Murphy, Tony O'Sullivan and Tom Cashman. Cork were defending a record of never having been beaten at Parky Cueve since the 1920s. Their opponents in the first round of the Munster Championship, Limerick. Cork led at half-time by one point, thanks to a goal scored by Alan Brown. Yes. 
But Limerick were rampant in the second half, scoring three goals and 11 points. Two goals from Todd Tobin. This was the second of them. Down towards Tobin again. Getting inside once more. Jack Lane hesitating. And that's it. Tobin's second goal. And one from Owen O'Neill. Fregel Ryan. Poor striking again. Frankie Carroll with a set up. Gary Kirby. Oh, no. In it goes towards Todd Tobin. It's Owen O'Neill as well as just got off. Final score, three goals, 18 points, to one goal and eight, and Cork's proud record in Parky Cueve was shattered. Limerick's next opponents were everybody's favourites from last year, Clare. Rival counties, a derby match really, and the All-Ireland champions putting their title on the line against the team who believed that they should have been the champions back in 1994. Gary striking it giving it lots of height, distance and accuracy. Gary Kirby had a great game. He scored one goal and seven points. His goal coming eight minutes from halftime. Oh, that's Gary Kirby. Is he going to go for a goal? Gary Kirby hitting it and scoring. <laughs> James O'Connor for Clare was showing his paces. James e. O'Connor, 65 metres out, looking for another, and yes, he's put it over the bar. Four points for James e. O'Connor. A one-point lead at half-time for Limerick, but Clare took control in the second half with some fine points. These in particular from Eamon Taff and Fergal Dewey. Into the corner there is Eamon Taff. Taff attracting Mike Nash across with him, off balance, he strikes it. Lovely pose, and he puts it over the bar. Here's Frankie Dewey. Three men after him. And that's a fine score. Despite squandering many chances, Clare had a three-point lead with 12 minutes left. Then, three unanswered points from Limerick. Oh, cross, here it comes. So that... Last minute of the game, it looked like a replay, but Kieran Curry had the ball in midfield. Here comes Kieran Curry, Curry leading the charge of the light brigade, 45 metres out, he's a chance to score, he's put it high, he's put it over! The Limerick captain has scored a minute into injury time. And with that memorable score, the All-Ireland champions had reached the end of their reign, and Limerick had reached their third successive Munster final. Tipperary had, by comparison, an easier draw in the Munster Championship. First up were Waterford, who gave a good account of themselves, scoring one goal and 11 points. It's Johnny Brenner. He hits it well, it's dropping in, it's dropping so well, it's gone over the bar. But tip strength saw them through, with fine performances from Nicky English, Colin Bonner and debutant corner forward Liam Cal. This is a ball for Nicky English. Damien Byrne. He'll have to be very alert to keep Nicky under control. As every time he touches it, he's able to find the goalposts. Brought down by Fergal Hartley. Liam McGrath. Still batting his way in to John Lahey. Across and there for goal. Liam Cal has scored the goal. Tipperary then went on to book their provincial final place with a comfortable 24 points win over Kerry. There was a real buzz in Limerick in the run-up to the game. No. Training sessions were well attended and autographs eagerly sought. A fabulous atmosphere on the big day. 40,000 people watching in a first half that belonged to Tipperary. They went four points ahead after this Liam Cal goal. It's caught well by Declan Ryan. Support from Cal. A goal here. He's buried it. Liam Cal. 
14 minutes gone and Michael Cleary on the ball and on the target to make the lead seven points that's come straight to Michael Cleary and he punishes it Michael Cleary with a second point and this Liam Cal point gave Tipperary a 10 point lead at half time Limerick had scored only four times in that first half and all of them came from Gary Kirby in the second half a remarkable Limerick comeback this Sean O'Neill point left nine points between them after Kieran Carey scored the gap was down to six points it comes to Kieran Carey he'll go for the score from here can he make it? the answer yes Gary Kirby converted a free now only four points between them and the crowd were now sensing that anything was possible Eight minutes to go in the game and TJ Ryan had an opportunity to level the scores. Will this be the equaliser? It will! And the sides are level. Tipperary managed to regain a two-point lead. So it looked like Limerick's fight back was to be in vain. But inspirational Gary Kirby had a free, scored it, and that left just one between them with one minute left. Who gets it? It's Mike Galligan, stopped by three or four Tipperary players. Out it comes Foley, out as far as Frankie Carroll, one sub to another. Can Frankie with the hero here? He can! He's put it over the bar! And Limerick fans salute that point by Frankie Carroll! And thus, after one of the greatest monster hurling finals of all time, the two teams would have to do it all again in a week. Gary Kirby, Limerick's scorer-in-chief, was under medical care in the week of the replay, suffering from severe headaches. However, on the big day, he decided he would play. They were level, the two teams, after 12 minutes, two points each, when enter Declan Ryan. In towards Declan Ryan, the marking poor at times for the Limerick backs. And that's just enough to allow Declan Ryan in for his second point of the day. 15 minutes played and Limerick on the goal trail. He runs on towards Owen O'Neill, almost over in his stride, has it now. Kicks it and scores! A goal for Limerick for Owen O'Neill. Mainly due to Michael Cleary, Tiberi were on top again. This was a third of three points to make them level. Liam Cowell had a good point to put Tipperary back in front again. Then two Michael Cleary points from Freeze left a goal between them. And Frankie Carroll was on the scene. Will he opt to lob this one in? He's giving it everything. Right inside, it's a goal! Frankie Carroll got the stick to it. Half time. Limerick, two goals and three points. Tipperary, nine points. Gary Kirby at the start of the second half had a point, his only score of the game. But Limerick had the nose for the goals, and here was TJ Ryan. Runs on, and Ryan hits the post! And the second time he scoops it in! Tipperary got a point back, but Limerick stayed on the scent of goals. On O'Neill again. Huge one down towards Frankie Carroll. Runs on to Owen O'Neill and there is another one! The dancing feet of Owen O'Neill. Tiferary began to try and put a recovery together, but when Kieran Carey and Barry Foley knocked the ball over the bar, it was all over bar the shouting. And plenty of that from the Limerick fans. The final score, Limerick, four goals and seven points, that's 19. Tiferary, 16 points. A three-point margin and Limerick through to the All-Ireland semi-final. <laughs> At Kisman Park in Belfast, the Ulster final for the Liam Harney Cup was contested by the old rivals Antrim and Dan. 
Down were looking good early on in the game with the sides level at two points each. This Paul Coulter point, followed by an old Sands goal, gave down a four point lead. Marty Mallon. Mallon inside now to Connor Arthurs. Goes low. Coulter's there. And the keeper manages to fall on it. Is it in the net? Oh. It's in the net. No chance. But that was to be the closest they were to get to Antrim. Antrim came back into the game very much with some excellent scores. Now Jim Connolly on the break. Can't hit it left side because there was a chance that he could. But he hits it right side and that's equally good. It's Jennings, Paul. Oh, lovely point. Good run, ball glued to stick, good shot, good point. That's a terrific score by Aidan McCluskey. At half time, there was two points between them. Antrim ten points, Don one goal and five. In the second half, Antrim continued the good scoring to increase their lead. And with ten minutes left in the game, a fine goal by Gregory O'Kane made ten points the difference. Now it's Gregory O'Kane. Goal! It was all over then, bar the shouting. Although Down did get the last four scores of the game, including a good goal by Dermot O'Frey. Final score, Antrim one goal 20, that's 23 points. Down two goals and 12, that's a total of 18. And so to the semi-final lineup for the All-Ireland Championship. Limerick versus Antrim and Galway against the Leinster champions, Wexford. To win the Leinster final, of course, after what a gap of 19 years, many people said maybe that's it, Wexford will be satisfied. Yeah, I think when we went back to Wexford, actually, and we went to Gorey, we had a magnificent crowd in Gorey, like, it was unbelievable, like, you know, and everyone was chanting and singing and shouting, and they were so overjoyed about it, like, you know, and uh, we were delighted as well, of course, naturally, because we had won it the first time in 19 years, but... Uh, I think it was the Wednesday night after the game we sat down and we had a meeting, the players meeting, and we, we decided this is great lads, but we can go further. How did you get them to put their feet back on the ground again and say, look, we've got to play Galway now? Right, well what we did was the first night back, we gave them three days off or whatever, I said, right, on the Wednesday night we brought them out to Beach and Curl Low, gave them a run, went for a swim and did all sorts of nice casual things. So on the Thursday night we brought them back for training in Wexford Park and said, right, we've enough done. Have you your bellyfuls? We had, We have enough. So we kind of sat down and contemplated that and discussed it and fellas started to come to realise, no, we haven't enough. So we said, right, well then we're going to set limits on our, uh, what we want to achieve. Are we going to go for this thing? Do we really want to go for it? So I said, I want to pose a question to Lottie and I want you to write down the answer. How many more All-Ireland semi-finals are you likely to play in? And how many more All-Ireland semi-finals are you guaranteed to play in? So the answer was one. So that kind of helped to focus the mind, and this might be our only one. So we went on and we played Galway. And we now rode, rode in out of the sunset, having cast off a few psychological shackles off our backs. And also, we now had a new agenda, because awfully we're, Galway were one of the only teams that had beaten us this year. Galway manager Matty Murphy had suggested that his team were the best in the country, and there were many who would have agreed with him. Yes, I mean, uh, it was a... Uh a statement that Matty Murphy was using sort of all that week, whether it was to frighten us or what, I don't know. I mean, but again, I mean, we weren't worried sort of of what anybody else was doing. Like, we were just trying to keep our minds on our own game and focus on our own game plan and, and, and just the Wexford team. Like, and I mean, it was a very tough physical, you know, dogged match. It was nobody was getting the upper hand in the, in the game. And I mean, it wasn't over until the last couple of minutes. 50-50 goal here. Rob Guiney going into challenge, Joe Rabbit back there as well. Guiney turning on his right hand side towards Larry O'Gorman. Rory McCarthy in there as well to challenge Brendan Kyo. Comes to Michal Donahue, tidy hurler. Diagonally across towards Kevin Broderick. Sean Flood back there, tenaciously taking it up, beating two men to it. Son of Tim from some great Wexford teams in the 1950s. Nice ball down towards Martin Storey. Trotted on there by Eamon Scallon. Comes towards Larry Murphy. Here's a chance. And Larry drills it over the bar. And Wexford are in front again. 
the club all man's first point. He makes it three points to two. Down through the centre it comes. Well judged. Mario Gorman. Out there as far as Adrian Fanlon. Brian Feeney. Mario Gorman trying to nip in there and dispossess the Galway man. Comes instead to Tom Dempsey from a huge distance out. From 55 metres out. Great point indeed by Tom Dempsey from Buffers Alley. And Wexford lead by four points to two. So Galway's free. Playing into the wind in the first half. Towards Cahill Moore. Bounces away off the stick of Liam Dunn to Rory McCarthy. Low along inside towards Tom Dempsey. Getting there ahead of Jerry McInerney. Good play inside towards Evan Scallon again. Some fine play here by Tom Hellebert. Very steady in a short corner back play. Out it comes only as far as Larry O'Gorman. The hand pass outside to Martin Storey. Two seasoned campaigners linking up together. And Storey puts it over the bar. His second point. And all of that is a result of a very good pass from Larry O'Gorman. And it's five points to two in Wexford's favour. Moore trying to advance inside Liam Dunn. He's got a few yards now in which to be creative here. And it's buried by Joe Cooney. Give him half a chance. And he'll destroy defences. Sides are level. 1-3 to 6 points. Twenty-one minutes were gone when that reached the back of the net. Some very forceful play here. Yes, you can see here as Calmore picks up the ball, comes inside, right? Maybe has a look to take his point and sees his normal side, went for goal, wasn't intended as a pass, I don't think, and the ball scrummed off his hurry, crossed the square to Joe Cooney and he buried it. Edwin Fanon fails to cut it out. Michael Coleman to apply some pressure in there. Wexford defence down a man, Colum Keogh. And fairly stopped by Joe Rabbit. So it'll be a free to the Slaney Siders. Free to be taken by Liam Dunn. They still have not brought on George O'Connor. Here they come into the attack. Oh, he's a chance! It's a great goal by Rory McCarthy! Rory McCarthy! A wonderful goal! So six minutes after Joe Cooney got Galway's goal, there's the reply by the 14 men. Down by virtue of the injury to John O'Connor, and without the sub having been brought on just yet. Yes, sir, we can see the goal here. Great score by Rory McCarthy. Liam Dunn and Adrian Fenlon taking it again. Oh, nice pick up by McCarthy. He completely sends his man the wrong way. That's a terrific piece of skill. So a goal and a point. Last couple of scores for Wexford, scored by the St. Martins player. It's 1-8 to 1-4. And Rod Guiney doing the marking on Liam Burke. Meanwhile, it's Sean Flood. George O'Connor coming to assist him. Ball spills from his grasp. Out to Kevin Broderick, 45 metres out. Good block down by George O'Connor, but Galway still have it. And here's Cahill Moore, and they have a man over here. Francis Ford, and stopped on the line, but it's belted in. Cahill Moore. Flicks the ball up, hand passes it out to Cahill Moore, and again, into the corner forward. Great save by the goalkeeper, Borelius Calmore, to finish to the back of the net. Great goal for Galway. It's gone over. Tom Dempsey's third point. One from play, two from freeze. And Wexford have a one-point lead. And Galway then have this glorious chance coming up. And this is the reason why 
as that ball was sailing in there and the man was certainly pulled down Joe Rabbit and once again they have this ploy of bringing in Rabbit bringing out Cooney to torment the Wexford defence Joe Cooney is about to take the penalty Galway behind by two points this to give them the lead once again if he goes for a goal what will he do? he's gone for it it's gone off the stick of Colin Carroll it's saved a great stop by Liam Dunham the line here not alone does he stop it but he controls it gets it into his hand and makes a great clearance out the field Rod Guiney coming out after this one but it's taken by Michael Coleman instead driving towards the Wexford goal they look for another score here very promising stopped by Damien Fitzhenry didn't quite hit it as hard as he could I think Michael Coleman but it's Rory McCarthy with great pace he's got support outside to Larry Murphy now he needs the assistance of Martin Storey can Storey drive it over the bar the answer is yes well it's been something of the difference between the teams Wexford fast attractive play taking their chances and now opening up a three-point gap down towards Liam Burke it comes this time again they advance going right through the half back line and this time he wisely taps it over the bar Liam Burke's very first point of the match putting two between them Liam Dunn to take the free ten minutes to go Brian Feeney really it's a match you feel at this stage still can go either way just two points between the teams Wexford having the lead great catch by Larry O'Gorman towards Martin Storey out they come for it here and it's Michal Donoghue trying to pick it off the ground again challenged by Larry Murphy it's won back by George O'Connor Adrian Flanagan next in there drop hit there by Michal Donoghue in towards Oli Fahey Jerkosh the Wexford fullback to Adrian Flanagan this time to get much greater distance into it and there's a problem and it's a goal a real problem Paul Finn was in there to challenge for that Billy Byrne inside in that full forward position and Wexford followers feel they're on their way to the All-Ireland final the Galway defence was badly caught out here yes we see it again here high ball from Adrian Fell comes into square and what the Wexford forwards hadn't been doing on that was to get in underneath it and get a touch with it and I'm sure Billy Byrne would take credit for that it looks like being Wexford Galway about to bring on another sub but Wexford have used up their full quota into Billy Byrne the substitute full forward back to Tom Dempsey turning to make a better angle and he's put it high and over the bar and that may now be that Tom Dempsey's sixth point in this match has ensured that Wexford are now on the verge of a place in the final Ollie Canning in there, oh perhaps the miracle will happen yet there's another goal for Galway Kevin Broderick making it 2.13 to 3.7 and once again just three points in it Galway within a goal you know of denying Wexford Nigel Shocknessy just taps it in but he taps it in badly Wexford have it, the whistle has gone I think, yes Wexford have won this All-Ireland semi-final as they play on at the other end, they haven't heard the whistle, but he has now, the fans certainly have, Wexford hold on to win, they win by three points, in spite of that last Galway comeback there. Wexford were not to be denied and Martin Storey, the team captain, will lead his side in this year's All-Ireland Hurling Final.
in the other semi-final, Limerick were expected to beat Antrim, and that they did okay, but it was by no means a one-way ticket. This Aidan McCluskey score put Antrim to within a point. Limerick 6, Antrim 5, 20 minutes gone. Then a run of Limerick points, among them ones from Frankie Carroll, Owen O'Neill, and Damien Quigley. And by half time, five points separated them. Limerick, 12, Antrim, 7. For most of the second half, the scoring was low, but Limerick were leading by six points with 25 minutes gone. It's Frankie Carroll with the sideline cut. Brendan Printer comes out. The ball is loose. The referee has signaled. That is a goal for Limerick. I think Owen McCluskey comes in behind, catches it. Here he's in. Yeah, his hand went over the line, I would say. I, I think he definitely stepped over the line with the ball. That goal put nine points between them. Antrim stuck to the task all right, but never really could get close enough. And Limerick were through to the All-Ireland Final. Final score, Limerick 117, Antrim 13 points, the margin 7. Now, did you really fancy yourselves? For the final? Yes, I mean, we had been together, oh, I think it was 186 nights before the All-Ireland Final, like, and that was including matches and practice matches and training sessions. I mean, that's every second day of the year. And, like, I mean, we had a, a great team spirit built up, a great confidence in ourselves, a great belief in ourselves. And, I mean, for the last for the last month coming into the match, we could not wait to get into the Crow Park and All-Ireland final day. Before the All-Ireland, we went down on a Saturday morning. We trained in St Mary's Club in Ross Lair, and we went back to the beach. And um, we had a barbecue that night, and we all stayed together. But during the barbecue, the lads were cracking, like, here we are having the barbecue and no bottles of Heineken or Guinness or anything like, you know. <laughs> we're just laughing about it, like, wouldn't it be great to have the beer there? But it really, the spirit really built up from that, you know. We were sleeping side by side, I think, along the army tent, covered in blankets, you know. And we got up the next morning at 6 o'clock and everyone was wiping their eyes and wondering what the hell we were doing here, you know. But really, I think the commitment there was built from there and it really showed on the day. What did Liam Griffin say to you? He got up, I think he, he must have been up at five o'clock, and he started screaming and shouting at us to get out of bed, you know. It was comical, really, to think about it, but it really, when you put, it, put yourself on the line for that, you know, that's when it really comes through for you, you know. Go! That's good, all the way through, and all the way through to the end. Go! Hard trading, though, was not exclusive to Wexford. Limerick had a long sequence, too, of tough sessions. They had their own agenda, although on media night, it was a light workout when the most asked question was, how are they going to cope with the memory of 1994? Well, you know, sometimes adversity makes the man, and maybe the defeat of two years ago has really made this team unique. Well, there's a lot of people still asking us about 94, and there's only one way to bury 94, and that's to win in Ireland this year. All year, people have been talking about this was Limerick year, and um, they were entitled to win an All-Ireland after the disappointment of 94. I think we were the only ones really that didn't believe in that, you know. We weren't going to bow to the to Henry Clay to let them go on and win it. We really believed ourselves that we could win it. What about 93, 92, 89, 88, 87, 77? The sum of the total of what we'd missed was about 15 times greater than what Limerick had ever missed. So hunger, we invented the stuff. And I mean, there was no way that Limerick were anywhere, could be possibly hungrier than us. But the thing was, hey, don't tell anybody. The only one knows that's us. We went through everything. Yeah, I didn't find that we had through the whole year, like, and we talked about that. And, um, I mean, we met in Gory, a couple of us, or we always met, and I thought it was important for us as well, like, to keep it that way. I mean, mm. Liam Griffin had talked about that, like, we didn't want any other build-up than we'd had for the whole year, and, and it really worked in our, in our favour, like, because he wanted a relaxed approach to the game, and that's the way we took it. And it was the week before the All-Ireland hurling final was one of anxiety for two of Wexford's best and longest serving players, Sean Flood and George O'Connor. Sean Flood, who'd been having an outstanding season, was suffering from a leg injury and extremely doubtful. But the Wexford management gave the agricultural contractor until near match time before a decision was made. In the event, on, Flood didn't make it, but dairy farmer George O'Connor did. After nearly two decades in the purple and gold, Come on. George was to get his big chance on Hurling's biggest day. I said to Sean, right, you know, 
keep in touch on, uh, on Thursday or whatever. If, if, if things don't come right, give me a ring. So on Friday he rang me and said, listen, I can't play. My own thoughts was I was shattered for him. And I put the phone down, I have to be honest, and I tried to console him and I cried myself. Because here was, his father was my folk hero. And his uncle was another one of my folk heroes. His uncle was the Hopper McGrath, one of the greatest hurlers ever to play the game. And his father was Tim Flood, one of the greatest stickmen ever to play the game. And here was the, this man, the Tim's son, getting his chance after so many years in the wilderness to get a chance to play in the Ireland. And I can't think of a more fitting player for Northern Ireland than, than Sean Flood. He's such a class act of a player. So it was sad. But then, this is sports management. All of a sudden you wind up bringing on George O'Connor, Roy of the Rovers, to finish his career, maybe, because I can't retire George O'Connor, to finish his career, maybe, on the last day of the last match to walk up as a Hogan stand and raise the Hogan stand at his last attempt. I mean, you have Cinderella and you have, you know, what, Lucifer all at the same time in a, in a sports management situation. Well, it was heartbreaking for all of us for Shani not to be there with us. I mean, because he had heard brilliantly throughout the year and he was one of the main reasons that we were actually in an All-Ireland final. And I mean, when the news came out, like, we were all really saddened for him. And the morning then in the hotel when we were having a bit of grub before the match, Sean said a few words at our, t at our team meeting and, and he actually broke down it and I mean he gave us all an unbelievable lift going out. I mean the hair was standing on every player's back, back of his neck like just waiting to get out into Crow Park to do it for Sean as well as for ourselves. It's the culmination of the Guinness Hurling Championship of 1996. Between the two teams they've gone through over 350 training sessions. Hours and hours of talks and coaching. And now it came down to the final time. Over the years in Wexford they've been saying whenever we beat Kilkenny and Offaly in the same championship year we will go on to win the Lee McCarthy Cup. Not since 1968 had Wexford won it, not since 73 had Limerick won it. Here's Larry Murphy, play for Trotbon. Mike Houlihan's the chaser. Larry is in with a chance of the first score. Excellent point. Lovely strike by Larry Murphy. Gary Kirby, centre half forward. Complaining that George O'Connor is standing too near. Just shows you that Kirby's concentration there was upset but not upset enough to deprive him of the point excellent three by Gary Kirby and the sides are level after seven and a half minutes Rod Guiney with help from Liam Dunn now George O'Connor <coughs> it being Fennell Stephen McDonough. Freddy Kyle, good pickup, good strike, and great point. An inspiring point from big Freddy Kyle. Great pick, great turn, and what about the accuracy? As Henry's pup comes off Dave Clark's stick, I think, no. Off the Wexford stick. And Mike Houlihan to take the sideline cut. One of the genuinely strong men of the modern hurling game. Good cut inside. Guiney can't get to it. Jerkush can. Owen O'Neill. Out to Barry Foley. It's over. 19-year-old Barry Foley, the scorer. Mike Houlihan playing a stormer at midfield. Callum Kyo can't get it clear. Here's Barry Foley again. Ah, beautiful. Barry Foley, 19, he looks younger. Another huge puck out from Damien Pitendry. Carey can't clear it. Fedlin Wexford. Easy one for Joe Quaid. TJ Ryan breaking away for Limerick. 
Good run by Ryan. Lost the stick, gives it to Damien Quigley. He's due a big game. This could be one of them. Damien Quigley, a lot of people are looking for a big game for him. They went ahead. Do you think maybe another score or two for them might have put it beyond reach? Yeah, well, we weren't too worried about it, but yeah, at times we were a bit worried, okay, but not too much because we, we said even before the game, like even if they scored three goals in the first five minutes, we've got to keep going, keep hammering, keep hammering at it. And, like, and thank God we've done that, like, and things went right for us. We turned around and we went up the field and we got a goal in from Tom Nimson. Gary Glass has it. Skips away from Mark Foley. Under hits it. Larry Murphy got it. Oh. It's the net. The ball practically dropped in short, and Tom Dempsey, the old reliable, Tom has been in Wexford teams since 1984. Well held by Fitzhenry, with a great eye, this goalkeeper. Kieran Carey, here's a point for Limerick, and I know Carey. What about that for a score? Here is Terry, a real inspirational figure. We call it right. The All Ireland final is dead level. It's Wexford 1 3, it's Limerick 6 points. John O'Connor with a little help from his friends, Liam Dunn. Larry Murphy, Dave Clark. Mike Hulahan battling in there. Mike gets a kill Malak boot to it. John O'Connor to his brother George. Larry O'Gorman. Martin Story. Martin looks up. Eyes the target. Has a go. That's ah, beautiful. A real captain's point at his first of the day. Martin Story to put Wexford back in front. This is the makings of a terrific All-Ireland. Great puck by Joe Quaid. Liam Dunn gets a stick to it again. He's played masterfully at centre back for Wexford. There's George O'Connor. He played eight years in the Wexford football team. Larry Murphy, Rod Guiney. Joe Quaid's ball. Got a bit of cover and help from Stephen McDonough. This is Declan Nash. Waiting for TJ Ryan. Only backs it down a little bit. Now, here's Barry Foley, lovely neat hurler with a classy style. I know this is the present that he's doing well as the third point of the day, but he really is one for the future. At what stage of the game did you realise that Barry Foley was obviously the danger man and the chances were that you'd be getting the job? Well, I was trying to get a message across the lean to give me a chance to go over him, like, you know, because I, I like that kind of task, like, you know, I like to go out and try and mark someone, like, I mean, if someone's causing hassle or problems or whatever, I like to get in there and try and stop him, like, so I was delighted to be asked to go over and do my job to stop him. He got one off you, I think, did he? He did, yeah. Uh, I think it was Mark Foley came up along the wing and he hand-passed the ball over my head and Barry Foley got up and tapped it over the bar and when I was running by him, then I said, well, enjoy your last point for today. That's what you said to him? Eamon Scallon, Martin Storey gets it quickly into his hands, shakes off Carey. Wonderful score, it's point for point, tip for tap. Martin Storey, the Wexford captain, he beat Kieran Carey fair and square. Beautifully sprinkled with individual skills this game. And in the team context, a really even battle. Larry Murphy picks it up, football style, on his toe. That's so big up for you. George O'Connor. Kieran Carey. Larry O'Gorman going on a dribble. And here's Barry Foley again. Quick delivery into Damien Quigley, beaten by Jer Kutch. And more football for Wexford. In centre field, it's Frankie Carroll with the ball in his hand. Leaves Guiley behind, plays one into 
O'Neill. On O'Neill. It's over the line again. And a game that continues to intrigue with some lovely skill. Great stick work, terrific turns by players. And as good a final as you could wish to see. This Henry hits it. High in the air and long. Settling here for Wexford. Dropping it in, looking for Gary Laffin. Mike Nash right on him there. Breaks down behind for Laffin again. He's in, he's in, he's in. It's a terrific save by Quaid. Absolutely sensational save by Joe Quaid. And they're at it again. Eamon Scallon is now having his name taken. And yes. here was a game that was sprinkled with beautiful yeah. skill. He's and put he's him off. off. He is going off. Wexford are down to 14 men. An absolutely silly, unnecessary sending off. From the Wexford point of view. Now Wexford are down to 14 players. The crowd's ignited. The game's ignited. George O'Connor took it through heavy enough there. Ball to Frankie Carroll. Up goes the hand of Rod Guiley. The game's got a new impetus. It was good before. Now it's good and ultra competitive. Tom Dempsey coming in along the back line. Trying to get a cut it back. Declan Nash, the defender, with him. Good pick up by Nash. Out to Mark Foley. Up to TJ Ryan. Gary Kirby can't get a grip on it. George O'Connor here, Wexford. Adrian Fenlon. In around the house. Mike Nash can't bring it down. Tom Dempsey. Point by Dempsey in the 35th minute of the half. And that's it. No more in the first half. The teams will go for their cup of tea. And their half-time assessment. With a half-time score, the Leinster champions Wexford, one goal and eight points. The Munster champions Limerick, ten points. Liam Griffin, you went in, your team went into at half time in the All Ireland final, a man short. Mm. Now, it's difficult enough with 15 v 15. Yeah. How are your thoughts at that stage? I felt in control myself. That was the most important thing to the management of the team felt in control. But I felt we could win it because um, I, we had sat down for two and a half hours on the previous Thursday and went through every Limerick man and discussed what would happen if he was put off. Then we went through every Wetford man and discussed what would happen if he was put off. And we came up with, after two and a half hours with strategies for what might happen in the event of players being put off. And the players were brought into a little room inside and uh, we, a few lads set up and said a few words like, you know, I was inside getting my toe uh, lanced by the doctor because my toes were looking to bloom thanks to Liam Dunn for that and uh, I missed some of it but I got back in for the tail end of it and I knew with the fire in the lads eyes that we weren't going to give up we only had 14 men so we were going to play it with 15 so nobody in the dressing room was even the slightest bit panicky so we gave the two full forwards a job to cover across the whole full forward line and cover a lot of ground we we're going to try and play the ball wide and let them do a lot of covering and we felt we could work out how we'd handle the extra man but it was 35 minutes, we were a pint in front, could we win the All-Ireland? And we felt that if we stayed disciplined, we would. Joe Quaid, like Fitzhenry in the first half, pucking it very long, very high. Frankie Carl in possession, Rod Guiney gets in the challenge, here's George O'Connor. George O'Connor onto Ger Cush. Ger's now playing as a wide man in defence because John O'Connor is in full back on Owen O'Neill. Gary Laffin, third chance of the half. And practice makes perfect. Gary Laffin, the scorer, and he truly deserves the point. He's had three chances, and he took the third one. Murphy with McDonough. McDonough's clearance. 
only as far as Guyney. Now it's Gary Kirby. Gary Kirby playing the ball into the forwards like. But John O'Connor got there first. Now TJ Ryan puts it across the face of the goal. TJ has scored for Limerick. And that's their first score of the second half with nine minutes played. Larry Gorman goes all the way in, but this is Kieran Carey onto it. Martin Storey, Dave Clark, Carey again, Clark. Liam Dunn beaten by Gary Kirby. A nice piece of play over there by, by Chill. It's going to drop in, here's the chance for... Oh, Larry Murphy almost in there for Wexford. And there's still that finish, Gary Lappin. Gary Lappin knocks it over the bar. And Wexford playing like a team that knows exactly what they're capable of and what they intend doing. This was a tremendous shot from Ryan Murphy. Look at that save again by Quigley. Ball put going. Lappin got it and put it over the bar. Watch this for an instant reaction. Unbelievable the save he made. What score of the match convinced you that this is our day? It wasn't actually a score, it was um, during the second half, uh, Damien Fitzhenry threw his body down in front of a, a ball that was landed on the edge of the square and he scooped it out to one side. And it just hit me then, really, the commitment that the players were putting in. I felt then that we would go on and win it, you know. Dave Clark, now he's a shooting chance. Damien Fitzhenry takes it down and it's flattened as he does by Damien. Well, we follow the play as Larry Murphy goes on for Wexford. Larry gives it to Gary Laffin. Oh, it's a great block by McDonough. Kieran Carey tries to football it out. T.J. Ryan. Patrick Tobin in there, battery for it. The Barry Foley of Fitzhenry stretches and hooks it away. Oh, he's a spectacular goalkeeper, but he's also a very good one. He's away up there in the Ollie Walsh class. Showman and good as well. Adrian Fenland, as we look at Mike Nash and Gary Lappin, Adrian Fenland takes this sideline cut for Wexford. George O'Connor knocks it back to him. Nice layoff into Larry O'Gorman. Larry goes for it. Larry's got it. Larry's got it. That's a great score for Wexford. This Wexford crowd is really lifting the team. Now, can Gary Kirby inspire Limerick as so often in the past he's been able to do? And again, it's wide, and this is just squandermania, really, for Limerick. Kirby hasn't really got into the game, and, and they rely so much on him up front, and he hasn't been able to get into the game. Dunn's done a great job on him. Watch him the whole time, really. That was the instructions I had if, if Gary Kirby... If I didn't hit a ball and Gary Kirby didn't score, that was my job. And, and like, in fairness to the rest of the... The backs in the centre field, I mean, they didn't give away frees and if they had given away frees, there could have been 10 points after Gary Kirby's name and he was reduced to two. We gave no free away in the second half and, I mean, that's that's the win of the all and for, for us that was really. They've got four minutes of normal time to play. Liam Dunn and Gary Kirby in the challenge. <laughs> it's a Limerick ball. Do you think Limerick have only scored two points in this half? The chances of had. Here's Dave Clark. And that's over the bar. Which ends the long run. Long, barren run without a score. 16 minutes until 32 minutes. 16 minutes without a score. I'm putting it to you. That was one of the greatest ever defensive performances seen in Crow Park. 14 men versus 15 against the wind in an All-Ireland final with a team that hadn't won since 68.
And in the middle of that game, our backs didn't concede one single free in the second half. That's a record. And you're the man for records. And that's discipline. And that's discipline. That's Henry. Was too greedy, really. Didn't get the length in it. He the wanted catch. a point. Debsy has it in his hands. Billy Byrne chases it and Stephen McDonough has it. Where can he go, though? Wexford have hunted and taxed. They've played magnificently with a man shot. Here's Kieran Carey. Big hit on Carey by Rory McCarthy and a free delivery. It's been a magnificent game. He'll have to drop this ball into the square. I don't think he has time to go for points. Drives it hard and low. Yeah. And it's taken by Jack Cush. And Wexford, Larry Gorman has the ball. And Wexford are the All-Ireland champions. Where were you going at the end of the game? Over onto the hill. To jump up on the railing to say hello and thank you very much to all the supporters, but especially my family who are standing behind the railing. You knew exactly where they were? I told them that I want them there after the game, that I'd be there. With the ball? With the ball. Well, with it, the ball or not, but put my hands in the air. A team that has waited in the hurling wilderness since 1968. Lost a man in the first half. Had to play with 14. Had to start the match without Sean Flood, replaced by the oh. agile veteran King George, George. O'Connor. But in the yep. end, a magnificent Wexford fighting display. And the referee blew the final whistle. <laughs> that's, that's when I realised we won it, and I seen Larry nearly, Larry O'Gorman nearly going over the, into the hill 16 with the, with the hurling ball in his hand, and and Jer Jer coming over to hug me. So that was a great feeling. What did Jer say to you? I love you, Liam. <laughs> I said I love you too, Jer. <laughs> when the final whistle blew, I remember after just turning around and looking around at the colour and the people running down off the stands. It was something that would stick with me for the rest of my life, just to see him. And you could see grown men with tears in their eyes and all. And I remember um, I met Tom Ryan after and a few play all players, Billy Rackett, and you could see the emotion in their face. And then it, you realise really what it means to the extra people, you know. Captain Martin Story. as the bridesmaids of Harland. Well, today we got married. I can see you'll never forget it. Never till the day I die. Most magnificent occasion of my life. I had started on, on the Wexford team and I was working with a lad from Minnesota up in Dublin. And it was the first championship in that year and he just said to me, um, I'll have a bet now. He says, you won't win an All-Ireland medal or a Leinster medal. And I said to him, I'll tell you what, I says, I'll have a hundred pound with you to hell, I'll have an all Ireland medal within ten years. And I mean, I didn't. I didn't have it. That was 1985, so I, I lost my bet, but I mean, it's a bet now this year, 1996, I wouldn't mind paying, but thank God the fella's in Australia and he'll never get his money. <laughs> Oh, 